Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you all had a super fun Halloween 2023, and I know my last Loki video was uploaded a couple days late. That's what happens when I get caught up with Freddy Fazbear. So to make up for it, I'm making this video right on time. Yes, the penultimate episode of Loki Season 2 is now on Disney+, Plus, and so I gotta talk about this, of course, with the spoilers. So here's your spoiler warning. If you have not yet watched Loki Season 2 Episode 5 and you're planning on it, don't watch the rest of this video because I will be talking about what happens in this episode in detail. If you have watched it or you don't care, then your temporal aura is clear. That means you're good. Stick around. Keep watching. All right, that's your spoiler warning for this video. So we all remember how last week's episode ended because, holy shit, the TVA's temporal loom collapsed in on itself and there was this big explosion. And so the TVA is disintegrating before Loki's very eyes. He turns and he sees that all of his co-workers are gone. What could it mean? If you get that reference, props to you. But yeah, the place is just spaghettifying and all of a sudden Loki's time slipping returns. So all right, I guess it's back. So once again, Loki starts getting pulled around to different points in time and timelines. But we notice that all these places they have to do with the crew he was just with. So we finally get to see who all these people were before they were abducted into the TVA, which has been a burning question on everyone's minds since Loki season one, episode four, when we discover that everyone's a variant. At least to me, I was like, okay, well then who were all these people? I'm curious to know. Now we get to find out for a few of them. We see Casey was an Alcatraz escapee. It's funny, like after the title card and then it switched to this jailbreak scenario, I was like, who flipped on the Shawshank Redemption? That's what I was thinking anyway, because it just threw me for a loop. A time loop. I'm not even gonna. We see that B-15 was a nurse in New York. We see Mobius and, of course, as we all figured, he's a guy who sells jet skis in Cleveland in 2022. That was pretty great to see, I will admit. You know, it all comes together here. I love seeing him be so passionate about it. His real name is Don. It was both odd and wholesome at the same time, seeing him like that. And finally, we see that OB, whose real name, I guess, is A.D. Doug. He's a failed writer and scientist in the 90s in Pasadena. And with him is where Loki finally ends up. And since having your brain washed by the TVA doesn't wipe your personality, Loki and I guess I'll call him Doug decide to team up here. They're gonna try to figure out a way to control Loki's time slipping. Cause let's be honest, that'd be a pretty cool superpower to have. Cause if you look at that from another angle, that's the same superpower that America Chavez has, traversing the multiverse. Yeah, not a bad power to have at all. There is a great line though that Loki tells Doug. He's like, if I can't stop the TVA from being destroyed, there'll be nothing to protect against what's coming. At that point, I was reminded of why we're doing this in the first place. Why is the multiverse in danger at all? Well, he who remains warned us last season, there's a dynasty of Kangs out there. Yeah, and now they're coming. So we want to prevent that if possible. So Doug comes up with the idea to round up the crew from each of their own separate timelines, because I guess since everyone has their own temporal aura, if we bring everyone's aura together, it'll link to the TVA or something. I don't remember exactly, it kind of lost me there again. So I just kind of nodded my head and was like, okay, but we are gonna need a temp pad. How are we gonna come across one of those? Oh, here's a guidebook that Loki conveniently swiped from the TVA as it was disintegrating. Yeah, that was a bit convenient, but lucky we had it though, right? Otherwise we'd all be screwed. And then Loki accidentally time slips to Don slash Mobius's universe again. So he meets up with him and tries to convince him to come back with him somehow. And then OB Doug shows up and I love the fact that he was like, yeah, it's been 19 months for me and I lost my job and my wife walked out on me. Right there, I was like, holy fuck. Holy fuck, it's like Interstellar. Yeah, that theory of relativity shit, that's what it reminded me of anyway. And I was like, God damn, that sucks for you, dude, losing that time. But, and so we assemble the team. We get B-15, the nurse whose real name I don't think we ever discover, or at least I didn't. We get Casey, AKA Frank, we get our crew together. Except I was like, wait a minute, there are some faces still missing. Yeah, we still gotta go get Sylvie because she was there too. And I also thought that we still had to go get a Kang variant because Victor Timely was also there. But I guess that's irrelevant now, huh? In any case, Loki takes the temp pad to Sylvie universe, where she's back at her Mickey D's. And of course, Sylvie being Sylvie, I mean, she does remember everything because that's not her original timeline. We remember she's from Asgard, you know, she's a Loki. So she does still remember everything. And of course, Sylvie being Sylvie, she chooses not to help Loki at first, because that's just what she does at this point. I feel like this is the third or at least the second time this season that's happened where she's like, no. Oh shit, I mean yes, because it's not until her own universe starts disintegrating before her eyes that she changes her mind. Yeah, that would convince someone. And so Sylvie joins the crew. But unfortunately, this took too much time. And now it's too late. Everyone starts disintegrating. And of course, everyone watching thought of the end of Infinity War. Again. Except this time, instead of dusting away, people start spaghettifying away. Everyone turns to spaghetti. Even Sylvie, I was like, oh shit. The whole universe turns to spaghetti. And it's in that moment where Loki finally learns to control his own time slipping. Yep, he did it. Now I guess he can freely traverse the multiverse of his own free will. Yep. Loki has that superpower now. So he goes back to when Sylvie joined the crew, and I was like, 
Wait a minute. When he time slips, shouldn't he be seeing his past self and not replacing them? Because that's how it would go down before. No, why is it different now? What? Maybe it works differently when you're controlling it? I don't know. But whatever, it's fiction. I'll roll with it. Besides, it's all theoretical anyway. And to explain how he can control it now, he's like, it's not about the when, where, or why. It's about the who. To which I ask, what does Pete Townsend have to do with this? I'm kidding. Nah, I get it. It makes sense. I guess. And so with that, Loki's mission becomes clear. He's gonna rewrite the story now, I guess, of the TVA. And so he time slips back. It looks like he ends up at the temporal loom explosion. And that's where this episode abruptly ends. I was like, all right, I guess we'll pick it up next week in the finale. But I got to thinking, I was like, if I were Loki, I would go back and try to stop Sylvie from killing He Who Remains again. Because really, that's what caused all this in the first place. I get that we're trying to stop the Council of Kangs from coming, but Free Will versus Council of Kangs, like, it really is a no-win situation. We've known that since the season one finale. Pretty good stuff right there. I like it. So yeah, I guess we will see what will happen in next week's season two finale. I'm pumped. This was another pretty cool episode. Hopefully the finale will bring it all home and make this overall season pretty cool. Only time will tell. So, Loki season two, episode five, science fiction. Have you watched it yet? What are your thoughts on it? And once again, what are your theories and predictions for next week's finale? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And of course, thank you for subscribing. Now if you'll excuse me, it's back to Super Mario Bros. Wonder. That game's taken me a while to beat. I do apologize for that. I'm still gonna review it. I'm almost done with it, but until then, peace!